the Mets, meet the Mets, step right up and greet the Mets. Bring your kiddies, bring your wife, guaranteed to have the time of your life, because the Mets are really sucking the ball, knocking those home runs over the wall, east side, west side, everybody's coming down to meet the M-E-T-S Mets of New York Town. Oh, the butcher and the baker and the people on the streets, where do they go? To meet the Mets! Oh, they're hollering and cheering and they're jumping in their seats, where do they go? To meet the Mets! All the fans are true to the orange and blue, so hurry up and come on down, cause we got ourselves a ball club, the Mets of New York Town. And we are live, Mets and overall baseball fans. Thank you guys again, as always, so much for chiming in for the latest live stream here on Morty NYM. It is day seven of the free agent frenzy for not just the Mets, but the MLB as a whole. And of course, with me off air, per usual, a plethora of moves have happened starting right around 9 a.m. this morning or so. Of course, I didn't wake up in proper time. So a lot has transpired. A lot of you guys know it already. We're going to be running down it all, exactly how it impacts the Mets, some players that the Mets had tags with to varying degrees, and why exactly did they not land those players? What is next for the Mets? And of course, the other respective teams in the league as we follow on again with all the latest news and rumors on the free agent and trade front a lot to get into today folks literally the stove is burning hot right now so see how much longer it stays hot or maybe because again the fact that i'm live right now if you're watching some replay you'll you'll see or not if more moves happen and again with my luck who knows exactly what's going to transpire but plenty again too and i appreciate every single one of you guys being in here and yes black shirts and black shirts only at least for the channel i have, I have a big wardrobe i just i really like just wearing a black shirt along with my jean jacket per usual in the live stream but like i said a lot again new make sure to smash that like and subscribe on guys appreciate everyone so much for being here i was getting 100 likes for the first short-term goal and yeah let, let's let's dive right in we we got a lot and i mean a lot to discuss today folks the amount of things that have happened and a short period of time are ridiculous and the floodgates are officially open now it's the question of are we going to see freddie freeman is he going to make his landing spot today are we going to see chris bryant make his landing spot today and again depending on exactly what transpires we'll either be live here for you know multiple hours and if you're watching replay maybe it'll be shortened assuming that nothing crazy happens other than what we'll be talking about and then we'll be live later tonight um again it's a very fluent situation right now but all i know is that we have a lot to get into so again my 250 plus viewers Thank you guys all so, so much for chiming in. I really appreciate that. Like I said, we have a big, big, big deep dive to get into. And the new star today, as many of you guys saw by now, with Oakland and Toronto doing that massive trade that sent, yes, all-star, platinum glove, gold glove, third baseman, Matt Chapman, to, yes, the Toronto Blue Jays. I've been saying this for a little bit over the past couple of days. I said that Chapman, again, the only way the Mets would land him is if they part with Jeff McNeil. That isn't going to happen as of now, obviously. And now Chapman goes to Toronto. I said that he would either go to Toronto or the Phillies. The Phillies weren't showing a willingness to part ways with their prospects. And Toronto has been going after a third baseman. They tried for Jose Ramirez, and they still are actually. We'll be getting into that in a second. But yes, they land Matt Chapman for three prospects. None of them being the likes of, you know, a Groshans or some of the other pieces that they have there that you would have thought made more sense to part with uh, with the A's. So I think Toronto wins this trade. I don't know exactly the prospect rankings for the three prospects or so that go the other way. Wardy, I jinxed us. I didn't jinx us, Slant. I told you that, again, if moves happen, it'll be 
after I live stream. And we saw that. I don't even have on the list right now Anthony Rizzo signing with the Yankees last night because so much has happened again today. So, I, you know, Rizzo again with the Yankees. We know the story there. Two years, um, 30 million, 30 to 33 million, I believe. So that's a very good deal for them on the shorter term. That means that they're not getting Freddie Freeman, obviously. So that makes me happy as a Mets fan. Uh, but Freddie still has a chance to go to LA. So that is still a concern for sure. But again, thank you guys so much, everybody, for chiming in. Really, really appreciate it. I know we got a lot of emotions going on. Blue Jays fans, I know you guys are absolutely pumped up and rightfully so. You get an awesome glove, a fantastic glove, the best defensive third baseman in baseball, and they are not done making moves. Further reports have indicated from Ken Rosenthal over the past hour or so that the Blue Jays are still trying to get Jose Ramirez, J-Ram, but as a second baseman. So while the likelihood doesn't seem strong on that front as of now, Toronto has a plethora of talent they can part with. Some guys on the immediate roster and guys, of course, in their farm that I know that a team like the Cleveland Guardians would possibly enjoy. So Toronto is definitely a team to continue to keep an eye on. Yes, they're probably not landing Freeman. And yes, they didn't land Schwarber, but they are still very much doing a fantastic job. So we'll see exactly what is next for the Blue Jays. I'm sure we will find out more today. But yes, we saw the Philadelphia Phillies did land Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber did feel like more of a launch shot, especially as of late, because we saw, again, reports yesterday by Andy Martino as well that it didn't look like the Mets would be in on Schwarber. And it seems like the obvious reason was, one, the Mets have lefty bats that they are feeling that they will be impactful through the DH position, not being in, of course, Robinson Cano. Again, to what degree, we'll find out. But also Dom Smith. Dom, if he's going to get playing time, hopefully it's more so at the DH position than it is anywhere else because, you know, you're not going to have him at first much. And, of course, you're not going to have him in the corner outfield too much, at least. Dom did hit two piss missiles off of Max Scherzer today in their first sim, sim game. Scherzer looked great. The only really mistakes that he did was throwing some things down the pipe. One was up and in, and Dom just turned on it. So Dom hit two home runs against Max Scherzer today. If you guys didn't see it already, in the sim game, and I saw that Ty, uh, Tyler McGill pitch, David Pierce, and they looked okay. But yeah, very, very interesting to see Dom uh, turn on Max the way he did. So hopefully we get a redemption tour from Dom. Um, Tom, Dom. He's always had pop in his bat. We'll just see exactly should he stay with the Mets. And again, that's still a big wild card, what he's going to bring for them this season. Uh, but again, Kyle Schwarber, four years, just about $80 million. I'm not bothered by this for the sake of the Mets not doing this. I never thought the Mets would land Kyle Schwarber if it was, a, if it was anything more than a three-year deal. No one should have thought otherwise. And because of the fact that we see Schwarber not landing with the Mets, not really upset about that. What I am upset about is, again, the fact that he goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. Yes, he's slotted right now to probably play in the corner outfield. And yes, he's not a, not a good outfielder at all. So that's a benefit. It doesn't benefit them de them defensively, which has been their biggest issue for so long. But again, they get that massive power bat in the middle of that lineup. And the Mets got torched by Schwarber last year. So I'm not excited to see Schwarber within the division. That's why I'm bothered by Schwarber signing with the Phillies. It it's not because of the fact that the Mets didn't land him. I never expected the Mets to go past three years. I said this in basically every single live stream. The Mets were going to get someone like Schwarber. It would have been shorter term, if anything. And it never felt like that they have had truly a heavy pursuit either. Again, reports could come out to suggest otherwise. But yeah, Schwarber, of course, goes to the Phillies on a four-year, right around $80 million deal. That's a little bit of an overpay, I would imagine, especially for a guy that, again, profiles more so than anything at the DH position. So we'll see how he does with Philly. Hopefully the Mets can uh, eliminate the amount of home runs this guy hits against us. But again, he had nine home runs against the Mets when he wasn't just with the Nationals, but the Red Sox too combined. So he's a Met killer. Mets will have to do their absolute best to try to combat him but plenty of other moves happened today too as you guys are seeing the live stream and again i apologize for not answering any questions or really comments yet i really want to run down everything that's transpired here to share my initial reaction and then we're going to deep dive all these questions about what is next how did i not hear about this again a lot of news has happened today i don't blame you guys if you didn't see anything right away i didn't either i woke up and i didn't even realize that say suzuki an hour prior signed a five-year 85 million dollar deal with the Chicago Cubs. So Suzuki, who looked like he was originally going to the Padres, no, we did see that he was going to be meeting with the Cubs over the past day, and he locks down a five-year deal with them. He's going to be, of course, getting plenty of playing time. He's going to be their starting probably right fielder right now. I'm sure that was the biggest factor in him landing in Chicago because of the playing time aspect and, of course, getting a nice payday. So say Suzuki would have loved him on the Mets, but Another guy that never felt likely, not so much because of the Mets' lack of interest, but rather just his preferred destination. But here's where we get into the discussions about two guys that have been connected to the Mets 
to varying degrees. Um, and sounds good, Apollo. Thank you so much. Again, appreciate all you guys being in here. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe on. As always, guys, throwing ice on the hot stove because I'm live. Absolutely. We got to calm things down a little bit. So that's why I'm here. Um, but all jokes aside, here we have Andrew Chafin. We've been talking endlessly about Andrew Chafin on the channel. I have been, I've been wanting this guy literally since the trade deadline of last season. But no, he lands with the Detroit Tigers, which again, shout out Robbie Hyde because Robbie actually predicted that Chafin would go to Detroit and it ends up being a good fit because they do need a lefty in that pen that's more solidified than what they currently have. But Chafin signs a two-year, $13 million deal. And this is where we are having a lot of controversy right now on social media and the live stream in the chat. Everyone's wondering, why didn't the Mets land Andrew Chafin? Well, one, we, all, we always have to keep in mind did Chafin prefer the Tigers? Did the Mets give up the same exact offer and Chafin just didn't want to come here? That's something we may never know. So you always have to keep that in mind with players' decisions. There's no denying that. But I will say this. It would it does not feel likely at all that the Mets end this offseason without landing at least another left-handed reliever. And the Mets, you look at the options out there right now. For agency-wise, the biggest guy out there, I think most people can agree now, is Tony Watson. Um, Mike is going loud and quiet, loud and quiet. Okay, let me know how the audio is in the live stream, guys. If there's an issue, please let me know. I'll try to fix it. But Andrew Chafin would have been great for the Mets. So clearly the Mets did not bring him up, uh, sign him for one reason or the other. Again, we'll see how much his decision was impacted at all. But Tony Watson, I wouldn't be against him at all for the free agent market. I will say, however, I would have preferred Andrew Chafin. So I do think that I don't think Watson is necessarily Andrew Chafin level, but he is a very, very good and very, very underrated reliever southpaw that's on the market. But other than that, it's really the trade market where you're looking at lefty relievers, guys. It's Josh Hader. It's Brent. Uh, it's Brent Suter, which, again, if the Mets do trade for a southpaw, don't be surprised if it's with the Brewers that it's not Josh Hader. Josh Hader is a pipe dream. We all would love Hader. The Mets have chimed in on him. But let's let's be realistic here on how expensive Josh Hader is on his trade value alone. So I think if you're going to do a trade, look at Taylor Rogers still from the uh, from the Detroit, uh, pardon me, not Detroit, from the Minnesota Twins. It, it feels like a little bit of a less likelihood just because I know the Twins are being competitive this year. But you still got to keep in mind because the Mets liked him pre-lockout. And the Twins have showed continued interest, multiple occasions, and the likes of J.D. Davis, among other players on the Mets. We know that story by now. And with Brent Suter, Brent Suter, ERA-wise, had just over three ERA, 3 ERA for the Brewers, had a times ERA of like 3.76, I believe, has been a very, very strong and underrated reliever for the Brewers, Southpaw, and had right around 70 innings pitched last season. So, Keep an eye on the Brewers. If the Mets are going to do a trade for a reliever, I think there is a greater likelihood that it will be someone like Brent Suter over someone like Hader. Because again, Hader is going to cost you an arm and a leg. Are the Mets willing to give up all these assets, assets right now? I don't know. It doesn't seem as likely as what it was before uh, getting Chris Bassett. But because they got that middle of the rotation starter, I think that's definitely changed their perspective a bit on how they're evaluating trade markets. So again, this is a fluent situation. Just keep in mind that trade-wise, for a reliever, two teams that, of course, stand out are the likes of, yes, the Minnesota Twins and the Milwaukee Brewers until proven otherwise. So the last thing, however, before we start to get into questions and break down really what is next for the Mets and all this stuff is the Atlanta Braves just signed right as we were going live here. Or if you're watching a replay, then you know Eddie Rosario, two years, $18 million deals. This was a surprise to me, mainly because... The reporting that we've seen, I know that the Mets showed interest in Rosario. I never thought that Rosario was for certain coming to the Mets. I just knew that he was an option. I don't know exactly how heavy they pursued Rosario. We saw that, again, Instagram video of him with the Mets bucket. But again, in hindsight, you shouldn't put too much stock into that. Again, I didn't put too much. It was just interesting to see. But Eddie Rosario to the Braves. Does that mean that Jock Pearson is no longer an option for the Braves? Or are they going to still bring in Jock Pearson? Because we've seen reports or the past day or two, that Jock, uh, there were in discussions with Eddie Rez uh, Parmi with the Braves to rekindle that relationship. So I don't know what Jock Pearson's future holds, but again, if the Mets are going to land a bat in the free agent market, odds are it's going to be a depth type of bat, not a top star. As much as I would love Chris Bryant, I'm not going to get my hopes up on him because of the fact that, yeah, he's probably going to get a six, seven year deal, which again is justified why the Mets wouldn't want to go there. But We'll keep an eye on Jock Pearson. I think that there's still a solid chance he may go back to the Braves. I know that they are still looking for more outf outfield help, but they just landed Rosario. So I wonder if that changes how much that impacts things 
things for Jock and his future, and if that benefits the Mets at all. Because, again, if the Mets just land a solid southpaw and land a solid bat, I will be more than satisfied. I'm satisfied as it is right now, but I definitely would like to see them do more moves. I'm confident that they will do more moves. But, yeah, a lot of guys that we expected that they would originally do moves for, it has not happened. Same way, though, that I felt that the that the likelihood of the Mets landing a starter was going to be Sean Mania or potentially Tyler Molly that we saw before looking at someone like Chris Bass, and they ended up getting Bassett. Understood the reasoning, but my point is, is that everything that we think will happen, of course, doesn't necessarily mean something is going to happen, and that's why it's fun, and it can also, of course, be frustrating following the offseason in a nutshell. But I am going to address some donations here quick and then we're going to go further folks like i said we have a lot to get into i'm not i'm not really overly concerned i'm not bothered by quite literally anyone signing besides chafin just because chafin is i know someone that would have benefited the mets pen a lot so what will they do hopefully we find out sooner than later what they plan to do for this bullpen because i find it hard to believe that they do not land a southpaw unless they are somehow some way committed to a David Pearson type being used as a big lefty in the pen, which don't get me wrong, has endless potential there. But one, we have no clue if that's something that the Mets are playing to do. As of right now, they're playing to use their starters as starters, according to Billy Epler. And two, David Pearson, it's not an easy adjustment to go from the starting rotation, being a starter to a, bull, uh, to a bullpen reliever. You can't just do that overnight. So We'll see what happens. I'm still excited. The Mets may do some moves today. They may not do some moves today. Either way, plenty more moves are expected to come today. As I say this, watch nothing happen for like the entirety of this live stream. And then when we go off and wait until a later live stream, then more news happen. But again, thank you guys all so much for being here, guys. I do appreciate that. Continue smashing that like and subscribe button as always. Not sure if we're at 100 likes yet, but regardless, thank you guys so much for that. Help us get 200 likes for the next short-term goal. I'm going to see. I see one donation. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any other. Okay. I think it's just one. Awesome. Thank you so much for the donation, Lewis. I appreciate that. No, uh, no, uh, no, no chafe. And I think you meant to say there. No Rosario, no Brian. I'm concerned we're done and the Braves and Phillies have caught up. We stand pat now. After all we've done, Braves are favorites, Phillies contenders. As things stand right now, Braves, Braves have always been the favorites in the division. Doesn't matter how much more moves or the lack of moves the Mets do. Braves are always going to be the favorites when they're the reigning champs. So I don't think we should view things as otherwise, even if the Mets do anything drastic. The, the Braves are still the team to beat, and for good reason. Phillies, yes, this definitely helps them more. But I will say, by no means does this benefit them with what their biggest problem has been this past season, which again is still a certain level of pitching depth and defense. Phillies don't have defense to save their life right now still. They need a lot of things to change. That may very well be their demise again. And again, they don't have the type of pitching depth that the Mets do, of course. Not even remotely close. So I will say that the Phillies are a better team than they were yesterday, but they are still the third best team in the division as of now. And I think most people can agree with that. But Lewis, thank you so much for the donation. I really, really appreciate that. Josh, what's up? Um, really shows anything can happen. Absolutely. And there's been a lot of reporting going on. I know Chris Bryant. The Padres are apparently in uh, in the Chris Bryant mix, um, especially with uh, Fernando Tatis injured right now. The potential of potentially having someone like, I believe, Bryant at third and moving Machado until Tatis is back is something that's been toyed out there. Again, two big-name third basemen, again, even though Bryant plays all over the place, two big-name third basemen are being pursued by teams that wouldn't necessarily use them at third base for too long, that being the Padres for KB and that being Jose Ramirez at second base, I mean, a different position for the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot has happened. This has been quite the hot stove. Unfortunately, nothing on the Mets front as of now. We will see what comes of it. Um, by no means am I stressing. The only thing, again, that I'm worried about when it comes to uh, Parmi uh, Schwarber is the fact that, again, he goes to the, the NL East again. That's my concern. That is by far my biggest concern. It just, I'm not upset that the Mets didn't give him that contract. I think that would have been an overpay. But still, that is, yeah, uh, him him with the Phillies is not going to be a fun sight to see for us Mets fans. I can already tell. I'm um, feeling generous today. Oh, thank you so much, Yoshima. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well. Or Yoshima. I know I know it's potato potato. I always mix them up. Let's hope that the Mets move soon. Thinking with the buffs around division, Mets are going to need at least one more bat too. I, I tend to agree with you. I think that one more bat will not hurt this team at all. I know that the Mets feel comfortable with what they have, but I, I don't think anyone should be surprised whatsoever if they do land another bat. But if they do land another bat, what I would be surprised with if it was something significant. I'm not expecting anything more 
then at this point tops a Jock Pearson type, you know, Jock Pearson, a Corey Dickerson, a, you know, uh, same thing with potentially Tommy Pham. I know Brad Miller signed with the Texas Rangers yesterday. So he was a great utility guy that is now off the board. So yeah, no, I, 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 I do agree with you. I, I expect the Mets to make more moves. We'll see exactly what happens. But yeah, in a nutshell, I'm not I'm not concerned with the Mets right now. They just need to make sure that they figure out that southpaw on the pen. I'm sure they have something planned. And who knows, maybe they never heavily pursued Chafin because of the fact that they've been targeting someone else. And again, is that Hater? Is that Suter? Is that Rogers? Is that even just Watson in free agency that they like more personally? Who you know, who knows? But I'm not going to be one to just quickly judge here and say, oh, you know, everything, you know, not nothing is collapsing by any means. They're having a tremendous offseason, but they don't they do in fact need to add more to this team. I tend to agree. I would be more comfortable if they add more than not. Jack Pearson is literally a negative war player. It doesn't matter because you're not getting Jack Pearson to be your everyday player to have a significant impact both on the defensive side of things. And yeah, no, Jack Pearson, you know what you're getting with. He's not a guy that you expect to be you know, a guy you are relying on day in and day out in the lineup should the Mets land someone like him. I'm going to uh, check tweets real quick, though, guys. So, again, thank you guys all so much for being here. Why not pursue Soler? Soler is going to be looking for a big payday as a DH, and the Mets are probably more so in the market of a lefty power bat than they are a righty power bat. <clears throat> again, just bear with me, folks. You guys know the drill. If you find out um, any news, please let me know in the live stream. Or, of course, tag me on Twitter at WordyNYM. Again, really appreciate it. Yankees and A's have been talking, according to sources familiar with the situation. Of, and Yankees have been talking to the A's, obviously, about uh, Shamanaya and uh, Frankie Montas. So Yankees are kicking tires at trying to get one of those really, uh, starters. Wouldn't surprise me either if the Yanks land one of them. Again, the Mets landed one of those big stars for the uh, for the A's, which I'm beyond excited about. That being and Chris Bassett, who has some of the nastiest pitches in all baseball. You guys are going to love him. So, uh, yeah, I think Sham and I makes a lot of sense, especially if you went to the Yankees. Um, Frankie Montas, I could definitely see happening too because the Yankees have a deeper farm. They have more to offer than what the Mets do at this point in time if they really want to go all in for a Frankie Montas type. Uh, because Luis Castillo and Tyler Miley, I did see a report yesterday, uh, they are not likely to be parted with. Like every freaking year, the Reds, they start to sell off and then they cut it short. They just can't stop gain, gain themselves in their own way. I, I don't... I don't understand what the red reds do, but again, I digress. Um, let's see here. Murray. Uh, let me check. Is that the tweet I just looked at? If I uh, I think that's exactly what I just looked at. Um, Shane green back to the Dodgers minor league deal. You guys remember Shane green originally was with the Detroit tigers. Then the Atlanta Braves had some success. The Mets uh, were tagged to him uh, during last off season. The Mets ended up not landing him. Then he signed with the Braves and did not do well with the Braves. And then was with the Dodgers as well last year. Uh, but yeah, Shane green minor league deal. A uh, right hand reliever is back in LA. Uh, Yoshima. Thank you so much for your $2 donation. Just so you, uh, just so you know, you've been right. It's Yoshima. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you so much again for the donut. I appreciate that. <coughs> Billy Epler is probably getting some rest. No, he's not. Trust me. The Mets are working. We just don't know what's in store. And it's exciting. I, I definitely get excited when I don't know exactly what is going to transpire. Um, that definitely makes it more appealing depending on what tra what actually happens too. But again, the only player out of this entire list that us Mets fans should be scratching our head as to, okay, what are the Mets going to do here is Andrew Chapin. No one should be scratching their head too much about Rosario in the sense of Rosario would have been a nice depth fit for the Mets. But at the same time, n n I'm not complaining at all that he's going back to the Braves. That that doesn't, nothing drastically changes there. And we don't know exactly how heavily the Mets were pursuing Rosario. Uh, same thing with, say, Suzuki. Suzuki would never felt like a strong possibility really since, you know, the lockout ended and what uh, his type of market was looking like Schwarber never felt like a possibility unless it was at max three years he again signs four years at just around 20 million dollars per so again not phased by that just phased by the fact that he's going to the Mets rivals and then that Chapman trade which again that's a big big trade and a big win for the Toronto Blue Jays would have liked would have loved Matt Chapman on the Mets but the Mets already have their stopgap in a third baseman in, a, in Eduardo Escobar. So it was never going to happen unless they trade Jeff McNeil. And it looks like Jeff McNeil is going to be the Mets starting second baseman. So that there were reasons to justify going after the majority of these players. But 
assuming that other dominoes would fall in the process. This is not one of those things where you can look at and say, oh, you know, the Mets were for certain going to land short or, or, or Chapman or anything like that. No, it just depends on exactly what moves they do with their current roster. And to this point, they haven't because they feel comfortable to a certain degree. So the likes, however, of a Dom JD are really the biggest wild cards. JD, again, has always felt like the most likely to be par with, especially if they're going to do maybe for a significant reliever. Could JD be that asset along with, say, a prospect or so to land a Taylor Rogers from Minnesota? Is that possible? Maybe, because again, what we do know reportedly at least, and again, maybe it doesn't mean much that we know things reportedly because we know how much things have been catching us off guard to a certain extent. But is the fact that the, the Minnesota Twins want JD Davis back at the MLB trade deadline and have shown interest in JD Davis throughout this offseason as well? So, a very fluent situation. We're going to see what happens. I'm excited. I'm just happy that the hot stove is hot. And hopefully we get some more moves on the horizon here um, in the next, you know, couple hours um, and or later on in the second live stream. Should we take a break and come back live later after being live here for a while? But I'm going to start address a bunch of your questions now in the live stream, guys, and in the chat. Again, guys, though, thank you all so much for being here for my 500 plus viewers. I really, really appreciate that. Billy said they're they're fairly comfortable. That's not cut. Yeah, no, the Mets, the Mets are exploring all options. They're going to do what they feel is best for the team. I I I agree with them in the sense that Kyle Schwarber, four years, 80 million, is a contract that is avoidable. That's something that I don't blame them quite literally at all for not doing. Uh, again, three years, I think we have a bit of a different discussion. But four especially, yeah, no, I, I'm fine. Uh, it's just the fact that he's a Mets killer. That's the only reason why I am personally bothered by it. And I think most fans agree there for sure. And Chafin, same thing. Chafin signed a very good deal um, with the Detroit Tigers. Only two years. And I, even like he, I don't think he has a third-year option. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing we, we have to find out is what the Mets are going to do with this bullpen. Uh, that that lefty southpaw, that's what they've been preaching. And that's hopefully what they land. We just don't know who, who it's going to be or when it's going to happen. And then bat-wise, they'll remain opportunistic. I'm not going to get my hopes up on anyone in particular. But again, we will see how this all plays out per usual, like we've been doing every single day on the live stream. 